This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So we're going to go through and calculate the cost of equity. The cost of equity is the first component that we're going to calculate with regards to our overall weighted average cost of capital calculation. In the exam, you will be quite simply asked to work out the cost of equity, or alternatively, you'll be asked to calculate the weighted average cost of capital and then that weighted average cost of capital will require you to calculate the cost of equity as one of its component parts. So in the exam, it's not about trying to derive any formulae. All it is, is taking a formula that you are given, plugging in the correct figures, and then taking the answer that is shown within your calculator. So it's a very numerical type of question. But hopefully, for most of you, that, that will suit you quite well. So what we go through and do is when we work out the cost of equity, we start with what is referred to as the dividend valuation model or DVM for short. Now that sounds a little bit quirky because when we look at what the dividend valuation model does, the dividend valuation model actually works out the price of a share. Uh, it mentions there within the notes XDIV. I'm not too worried about things being XDIV at the moment. We're just thinking about the price of a share. But what it does is it takes the price of a share by looking at the future dividends and discounting them at the cost of equity. When we work out that market value using the dividend, using the cost of equity, what we can do is we can rearrange that formula in order to then calculate the cost of equity. So we're sort of working in circles if you so like. So what we've got in order to go through and look at how it arises, let's just look at the dividend valuation model. First of all, with, without any growth. So what you've got there, we'll draw up a timeline Let's just say that that there is today and that there is T0. In one year's time, then two years, three years, and then it will go on and on forever and ever into infinity. Because what we have today, today we have, is it the price? Is it T0? And then in one year's time, we will have a dividend which will be the same dividend every single year for years one, two, and three, if there is ultimately no growth. So what you have there essentially is a nice, simple perpetuity. So to go through there and work out the price, you go through there and take your cash flow, which is your dividend, divided by your discount rate. And your discount rate here is the cost of equity, as that is what we are going to discount back those dividends at. We can then go through and rearrange that formula. So KE is equal to D0 divided by P0. But again, the assumption that is that there is no growth. OK, so when we say that there is no growth, G is equal to zero. OK, uh, so nice and straightforward. So the cost of equity for a business whereby it pays constant annual dividends and there's no growth is you just take the dividend and divide it by the price. It's not very exciting, is it? So what you've got alternatively is whereby you have a dividend that grows. So again, what you've got there at T0, you have today's price, P0. In one year's time, you have a dividend, so D0, multiplied by 1 plus the growth rate. So D0 being the dividend today, but in one year's time, that will have grown by a percentage. So 1 plus the percentage will give you the dividend. Is it there in one year's time at D1? At D2, you've got there, is it D0, 1 plus G squared, because we have two years worth of growth, which is the dividend at D2. And then in year three, you have D0, 1 plus G cubed, which is the dividend there in three years' time. And again, what we're going to go through and assume there is that will carry on forever and ever and ever into infinity. So what we need to go through and, and do there is, again, we could use the dividend valuation model. 
But what we're going to go through and do there is we want to work out the cost of equity. So we would need to work out essentially the IRR of the future cash flows because we want to calculate a discount rate that equates today's present value to the discounted future cash flows. So those future cash flows are those dividends that are growing by the growth rate. Now, again, the difficulty that you have there is that you would have to work out the IRR of those cash flows in the real world. In our exam, we do not need to. What we are given within the exam is you are given the formula. So Chris, if you just stop it there, one, because I've got an itchy nose, and two, I need to go back here and I want to get rid of those bits about the exams at the top. And we can start again. So if we were to go through there and then look at what the formulas are that are derived from working out the IRR of the cash flows, you've got there, first of all, what the price is of the shirt. So there's nothing to stop the examiner asking you to work out the price using the dividend valuation model and D0 1 plus G over KE minus G. But more importantly, and again, we don't need to rearrange the formula. You've got it there. The cost of equity is D0 1 plus G over P0 X div. So that's something important that we shall allude to a little bit later on. You need the X div price. So D0 1 plus G over P0 X div plus G. Okay. Uh, whereby G is the dividend growth rate, which is a percentage. So do just be aware that. Remember, if you have a dividend growth rate, say, of 10%, which, yes, may be a little bit large, when you're putting that into your formula, you need to put that there, don't we, as a decimal, which is there as 0 0.1. Okay. Uh, D0 is the current dividend. So when we refer to the current dividend, that's the dividend that we're going to pay today. And then remember, P0, the bit that we said that is important there, is that it is the X div price. So ultimately, all you need to do is remember the formula, okay? The formula for the price and the formula for the cost of equity. The important one of the two is the cost of equity. So what you could do, if you wish, have a go at the example uh, and, and then have a look at the next video, which takes us through that example. Best of luck. Okay, so let's go through and have a look at a calculation of the cost of equity using the formula that we saw from the previous video, okay? Uh, so this will hopefully put your mind at rest that there's nothing too complicated about it other than to remember the formula and apply the numbers. OK, uh, so it wants us to go through there, first of all, and calculate the cost of equity. So that cost of equity is KE, isn't it? And we know that the formula from above is that KE is D naught multiplied by one plus G divided by P zero x div plus g okay in the exam there's no need to rewrite the formula you haven't got the time you just need to plug the numbers in as you go along however as i'm just introducing you to the concept that i've written the formula down so you can see where the numbers go so what you've got there is it says banks has an x div share price so that's important isn't it uh, that we know that we have an x div price as i said we will talk about that a little bit later on so we've got P0 Div is $2.50. Uh, they've recently paid out a dividend of $0.10. Cents. So as it has recently been paid out, that is your dividend today. Is it D0? And they are expected to grow at an annual rate. Is it the of 4%, isn't it? But do just be careful. Remember, 4% as we decimalize it becomes 0.04. Again, in the exam, you don't need to even write anything out. Maybe you've got the skills to be able to put the numbers in your calculator as you go along. But if you don't, maybe it's a skill that you can develop. So D0 is 10 cents. So just be careful that. Remember, 10 cents it is 0.1 dollars, isn't it? So 
So make sure that you are consistent in terms of dollars on the top and dollars on the bottom or cents on the top and cents on the bottom. Multiply by 1 plus the growth rate, so 1 plus the 0 0.04, divided by our active market value, which is $2.50. So we're making sure there that we have dollars top and bottom. And don't forget there to add on the growth rate. Uh, if you tap that into your calculator, you should end up, is it with 0 0.08? One six, which to you or I, if you multiply by 100%, gives you 8.16. So if it was a multiple choice question, you would look for 8.16 and tick that as the correct answer. Uh, if you had to put in the data entry, it would tell you what to round it to. So if it wanted it to one decimal place, you would have to write in 8.2 and not 8.16 as that would be incorrect. There you go. Nice and simple. Following examples after this will build upon what we have just seen.